let's talk a little bit about why I'm here. I would guess that most of you probably don't know me. Maybe you've heard about me from LinkedIn and LinkedIn has given me just this crazy opportunity to get in front of audiences like this. I started sharing my story on LinkedIn at the beginning of 2018 and have since gotten so many cool opportunities to be part of conferences like this and speak to audiences. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert. I don't, I don't know if there is an expert in growing a company, but I have learned so much over the last seven and a half years. And uh, God, I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So a little tiny bit about me. Here's a picture of, <laughs> of me when I was, I think I was like 12, when I was putting together this presentation a few weeks ago, my daughter came in and saw this picture and said, we would not have been friends. And I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, I was a little nerdy, super into the Packers, go Pack. Um, and I'm a Wisconsinite through and through. So my background, my family is full of public servants, really great people that, but that like to be in the public eye and kind of taught me to value things like influence. And at the same time, with that influence, I kind of learned to never tell anyone when things aren't good. Like therapy was not really a thing when I was when I was growing up. And it was the old school mentality that when you have something going on in your life, you put your best face forward and you don't tell people when there's something bad happening. And that's OK. You know, it's a mentality that I think a lot of people still have. But it really taught me that uh, you know, like to hide that stuff a little bit more. And so getting to the point where I can be fully honest and fully transparent as a business owner and as a leader has been a long journey. And that's basically what I'm going to tell you guys about today. So next up is, uh, my journey in pictures. So, I started Accelity, like I said, seven and a half years ago. I rented a 300 square foot office that you see here. It was very Instagrammable um, and it, it was very small. I hired my first two employees and we did lots of cool startup stuff like went kayaking, we went to Brewers games that my face in this picture is very, very classic me. Um, we've got a ping pong table and it, it all looked really freaking cool from the outside, or at least I thought it did, but I was personally struggling. Uh, I'm sure that some of you on this online are bootstrappers yourselves and know how hard it is and how slim the margins are and how rough it is, especially if you're not financially savvy to start to get through some of that. And so for five years, we really, as a service company, we took any any customer that would have us, they ran the show. Some people treated us like shit and we just kind of took it. And I, I didn't tell anyone how much I was really struggling to run the business on the inside. And frankly, we, we almost went under a number of times and my team, especially my, a number of members of my leadership team have been with me now for five, six, seven years. And they later told me that they knew every time something was up because I would act funny, but I would never tell them. And that almost made it worse, right? So then in 2018, we finally hit our stride. And this was around the time that my journey on LinkedIn started. We were over a million dollars. We built a fancy new office. That's this first picture here. That's I. This was like my baby that I gutted and built out um, and was so excited to move in. We hired a number of team members for growth and I was just super proud of what we built until recently when coronavirus hit. I love this. Like I have made a huge mistake. That cat is showing exactly how I felt when you know COVID hit at the beginning of 2020. And I realized in hindsight that I had made some pretty big mistakes and I have been fixing a lot of them ever since then. Um, like a lot of people, I, I wasn't paying attention when coronavirus was happening in other places in the world, when people were getting sick. I have always been like 
head down and really focused on what's in front of me and trying to build my company and keep my family healthy and all of that good stuff. But I think I did myself a disservice because I didn't think that this was going to be as bad as it was. And I think a lot of people didn't really think that this was going to be as bad as, as it is. And I learned a lot. And today, what I'm going to talk to you about is I have spent the last seven months of my life just looking back at, at the company that I've built and what we've done right, what we did wrong. And I found a theme throughout all of it in that every time we took a step toward transparency, and there's lots of different kinds of transparency that I'll talk to you about today, we improved, we grew, we were able to strengthen our team, et cetera. And I know the, the description of this presentation is about all of the old ways of conducting business and why that doesn't work anymore. And I mean, that's that's a blanket statement. Of course, there are some things that still work, but there are a number of our tendencies that I really want to encourage all of you to think about throughout this presentation. So we're gonna talk about three kinds of transparency that I've kind of grouped together. The first one is product or service transparency. The second one is company and personal brand transparency. And last but not least is transparency within your company. <laughs> so when I, when I put this slide together, I showed it to my fiance and he does not think I'm very funny but I was giggling when I made it. Um, that's the weird thing about giving these presentations virtually is like, you can't see people's reactions. You don't really get like the laughter from the crowd, but you also don't see when your jokes fall flat. So I guess it's kind of nice in that way. Um, but the first thing that I wanna talk about is just the old way of doing business and how Companies traditionally want to hide their secret sauce, you know, so like for us, my business is a service company and we have proprietary processes that we use to do everything. Traditionally, companies would hide that because that's like their their money maker, right? We took a different approach and we decided to give it all away and kind of see what would happen. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that now. The first piece of that transparency is process transparency. Um, like I said, service companies, and I think honestly product businesses often like to keep their secrets secret. And we decided that we were going to do the exact opposite and we were going to put everything in on our website. So you can go to our website and you can find hundreds of pieces of content that basically describe everything we do. Um, you could figure out how to do pretty much everything that we do based on this website. And the reason that we did this is kind of twofold. One, it really helps people understand what we do and gain trust when they come to our website. And two, your buyers are going to be reverse engineering this stuff anyway. So if they are going to come to your site and try to reverse engineer all of your processes as a service company, they're probably not going to be a fit for you anyway because they value keeping their money and spending their time versus spending their money for expertise. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you are still kind of keeping all of the secrets of your company secret, I would encourage you to get more transparent and get out there and build that trust. The next piece of this is really taking those services and making the rest of the sales process transparent. So something that we did is publishing our pricing. And it's very interesting because most of the time when I connect with a prospect, I talk to someone on, you know, like a short call to see if we could potentially be a fit to work together. They haven't seen our pricing page yet. And it's not like we're hiding it, right? It's right out there front and center on our website. But because most service companies do not publish pricing, people just aren't looking for it. And I wanted to take a different approach and just put it out there and be very clear about what it costs to work with us. This was our very first crack at productization. So this was gosh, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago when we packaged up our services and put our pricing out on the website for the first time. 
And everyone said, don't do it. You know, you're not going to be able to sell what people really want. And I mean, if you look at what's included in these packages, you can see that we were insane and we put way too much into these packages um, and our margins were not great at this time, but that's something that you kind of learn as you grow a company. But in hindsight, this was our very first step in a journey toward company transparency. We have raised our prices, thankfully, three times since then, and we're a little bit more flexible with our packaging, but we will continue to publish pricing, period. And I think that every company should do it. Let's talk about why this transparency is important. First, it's so important to help buyers know what to expect when they engage with you. I think that, especially with inbound marketing today, there are so many companies that as soon as you submit a form on their website, they're going to hit you up, right? They're going to come and track you down. And with buyers knowing that today, that means they have to be comfortable before they even start interacting with your brand. And when you are open, honest, and transparent about your product or service, they're going to know what to expect, and it's going to be easier for them to take that step to reach out to you. Two is demystifying the sales process. Uh, when you're buying a product or service, especially, you know, like a product like an agency sells like us or an enterprise product, especially um, the sales process is really foggy. It can be very difficult to understand, you know, what a product or service is going to cost. And especially with agencies, God, I've heard from our clients that they went through the sales process with an agency and then the agency says, great, you need a hundred thousand dollar website. And the company is like, but we only had $20,000 to spend. And that's just a broken process in my mind. And I think that demystifying the sales process is it just takes, a, takes you a step toward your customer and helps you gain that relationship with them. And third, it lets clients or prospects or your customers disqualify themselves. And I think that some companies still see this as a bad thing, which is very interesting to me because like a sales team might want all of the prospects that they can get. Um, I would rather have people disqualify themselves if they know that we're too expensive or if they know that the services that we're offering or the specific way that we do it is not a fit. That's okay. I'm happy to send you off to someone that might be a better fit for you, but then we are not wasting our time in the sales process either. Okay, I'm so used to taking questions here, but if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I would love to answer them at the end. Okay, so the second kind of transparency that I wanna talk about is the personal brand. And I hope that most of you are focusing on, or at least thinking about starting to build a personal brand right now. I know that the old way is the, the company is the brand. And there are a lot of companies that have really fantastic brands, but you don't know anything about the people. We decided that while I'm really proud of our brand and everything that we've built, I want the people to be the brand. And when I was first given this challenge to build a personal brand, I was super not into it. I was like, oh, I don't really want to be an influencer or someone out there, you know, like a talking head giving advice and who wants to hear from me anyway. Um, and I, I bit the bullet and I decided to do it because I saw it as the future of growing a company. And now let me tell you a little bit about that story. So this is Phoebe's first video. This is my first LinkedIn video. This was actually uh, near the beginning of 2018. And I'm lucky enough to know Quentin alums, who some of you may know from LinkedIn. He's one of the first people that started creating all that content that you see on LinkedIn now. And he's the one that really convinced me to get started. Um, the organic reach on LinkedIn is still really great. And so I decided to start publishing videos there to see what would happen. LinkedIn is a really interesting place and what has happened to me has, it's been a, an interesting journey since then, because I think that a lot of people 
look at who I am on LinkedIn, which is very similar to who I am in person. Um, and they think that I, the transparency is just natural, right? Like, oh, you look so natural on video, just being super transparent about your life. And that is not the case at all. Like I told you before, it was always my tendency to just keep that stuff inside. And so getting really open and transparent on LinkedIn and then dealing with whatever the result of that was, was something I was honestly really scared of. And it was messy. And during this time, actually, I was going through a divorce, which I talked about on LinkedIn, which a lot of people think was a big no-no. But actually, um, my ex-husband, my two of my kids' dad, um, he sent me a case study of a woman who was so sick of the process of getting divorced and people saying, hey, your name changed. Did you get married? And then having to go and say, actually, I got divorced and like how awkward that is and how women are taught not to say anything in in the workplace and just to like smile and nod and deal with it. And my ex-husband, Derek, he sent me a case study or a, like a blog of a woman who decided that she was going to own her own story and she was going to put it out there and say, yes, my name is changing. Here's why. Instead of everyone speculating, I'm going to put it out there. And I was like, I think I can do that too. Um, now, again, none of this was natural to me. Telling these stories was not natural and dealing with like some of the fallout of it wasn't always fun. However, you can see that it started to earn me an audience. And as I, as I built this presence on LinkedIn, it just kept going and going and going and going. And I was getting more views and every and more views more comments more people messaging me in my inbox and sometimes i was like you know why am i doing this it doesn't always feel good to put yourself out there and frankly i questioned whether it was the right thing for the company especially since i wasn't on linkedin talking about my company's services i wasn't selling anything i was just talking about my journey through life and as a business owner and building a personal brand but I learned that what happened is prospects started landing in my inbox, lots of them. The, this building a personal brand was one of the main things that helped grow my company in those 18 months and get us where we are today. By putting myself out there, I made myself transparent and I made myself available to people so that they were able to kind of create their own relationship with me and my company. And it was just a really cool thing to watch. So as we created the personal brand through my company, and then we were thinking like, what's next, right? It's great for the CEO to have, have a personal brand out there, but now what should we be doing? And we decided to take it a step further and amplify the voices of our team. So earlier this year, I asked my team to publish a minimum of six pieces of content on LinkedIn in 12 weeks. So it wasn't a huge lift. It wasn't like daily content. Basically, they, they were asked to publish one thing every two weeks. Um, and frankly, some of them were not super happy about it. I think that they, I mean, I had set the, the pace, right, as someone who was putting my own face uh, out on social media as a brand of the company and they didn't all want to do that and I and they didn't have to right so when we look at all of the team members that started putting out content we have Mikey who is my head of sales he talks about and very vulnerably talks about what it's like to be in sales we know that it's a ride up and down it can be a total roller coaster you have to deal with rejection getting hung, hung up on every single day and he talks about all of that on linkedin and he's built this really cool audience of people that are like passing around his sales tips and then we have abby who abby did not want to put her face out as part of the company's brand at all but she wanted to talk about her expertise so abby talks about um, how to make video on a budget how to take good photographs depending on what kind of camera you have and she has built her own brand around her skills and jenny talks about growing up in the business world right so she discusses what it's like to be a professional that becomes a manager learning how to interview how to hire and how to cultivate really good employees 
And the cool thing about this is that now, whenever we talk to prospects on the phone, they know our employees. They're like, oh, I'm going to work with Jenny. I've seen her on LinkedIn or, oh, Abby's going to be my designer. I'm really excited to see her work. So not only has it made the people of the company, the brand, it has made us more trustworthy to the public and to our prospects, which has just been a really cool process. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out is, I, I mean, again, the reach on LinkedIn is so crazy that I convinced our head of client services, Alicia, to put out a video. This was her very first video and it went insanely viral. It got like over half a million views and I was like, how do I get numbers like that? Um, but for real, I'm so proud of her because she sat down in her office. She didn't really want to do it. She shot a video on her iPhone and put it out there. And this is what happened. And we were able to get a number of leads and signed a client just from this one video, 615,000 views. And it's really cool to watch. I hope that you are seeing a theme here. And that is that being transparent and being accessible to your audience builds trust. So by publishing pricing and by making our team available to everyone via LinkedIn, we are actually signing larger and longer deals than we were before. So it's funny, before we were growing via referral and by people that knew us or knew someone who knew us, and now we're growing into audiences that we never knew, people who never knew us, and yet they're signing on for longer deals because they feel that they know us and they think of us as an honest and transparent company. Really cool result. So one more quick thing to spin through, and then I wanna get to some Q&A. Um, the last piece of transparency is internal transparency. And this for me was really, really hard. This was probably the hardest piece for me, just like I told you at the beginning. Um, I, especially when things are not going well, I didn't wanna tell my team and I didn't wanna scare them. The old way of doing it is like, there's a company line, right? And there's managers or there's executives who know what's going on in the company and everyone else is in the dark until there's an announcement. And then often blindsides people. And in my opinion, that hurts a company's ability to retain, to make genuine connections and relationships within the company. And so this was, this is probably the last thing that I got to is complete transparency within the company. So we really went from the highest highs, which I talked to you about, to the lowest lows. I animated that myself, I was pretty proud. Um, but when COVID hit, we lost 40% of our revenue in pretty short order. Uh, it, was, it was terrifying, honestly. I mean, ugh, I thought this picture was very fitting because it's me freaked out sitting in our office that we paid a lot of money to build out and that's now been sitting empty for seven months and we're in at least till 2022, right? Like that is just an explanation of this year in general. And instead of hiding it or acting like everything's okay, I decided during COVID that I had to be extremely transparent with my team. So when this happened, we had to eliminate two positions. It was unfortunate. We didn't beat around the bush like a bunch of companies that are like, oh, we're downsizing or whatever it may be. It's we hired for growth and we're not growing right now. And I am so sorry, but we do not have a place for you. And, it, and unfortunately, you know, I mean, they took the messages pretty well when it happened, and we also had to tell the team what was happening. And it's very scary, especially on a small team, when you see people being being laid off because of something like a pandemic. We also realized that our team was imp impacted pretty evenly across the across the entire board, and so we decided to furlough everyone twenty percent. And there was, you know, there was no company line about it. It was, you see that we are losing revenue. This is where we were. This is the amount of money that it takes to run this company. And this is the monthly revenue that we have. So in simple numbers, this is what we have to do to make sure that we all have a company to come back to. And that was very 
scary. I thought people would just be leaving as soon as I said something like that, because who wants to stick around at an unstable company? Um, at least that's the narrative that I had in my head. Um, but I kind of, I forced myself to stick with the transparency and tell my team what was going on. And then at the same time, we applied for the PPP loan and we didn't get it in the first round because we didn't get our application in, in fast enough. And it was just, you know, like I was sitting there every day thinking, how much runway do we have? Have I spent seven and a half years of my life building this company and am, is it getting thrown away now? You know, like, is this pandemic going to take it away from me? Um, and I told the team, I told the team exactly what happened and it was scary. And honestly, I felt, I felt stupid and I wanted, I didn't want them to think that as well. It was just a very, very scary time, but something, oh, I have the chills just reading this. Something really cool happened is that as I began to tell the team more, more of the story and tell them what was going on, these are the things that they started to send me. Um, they reached out to support me, which is crazy. I think a lot of us, especially leaders in companies, we talk about how lonely it is to be at the top and being an entrepreneur and how you're kind of, especially when you're the only owner of the company, you're kind of solo. You don't always get as much feedback as you'd like, and you can't really always lean on other people and you don't want to put your stress on other people either. Um, and I had no idea that being transparent with the team meant that they were going to come to me and thank me even when they were being furloughed. It, it just seemed like the opposite of what I thought was going to happen. But I learned that when you get totally honest and you show that you have your team's best interests at heart, it can actually, bad things can actually bring you closer together. So what now? I just took you through kind of our entire journey to transparency. And there are three things that we are focusing on now. One, I'm not making decisions alone anymore. I have brought my management team into every single little detail of the business and we're staying transparent by bringing the rest of the team in too. So we have a scorecard that we are looking at monthly that defines the health of the business in every single area. And everything's up there from where we are in revenue goals, how much cash we have on hand to client complaints to at risk clients, the entire team gets to know. And I think it's better that way. Um, it really gives me that prompt to share and be transparent with them. And I think the team feels better knowing what's going on in all pieces of the business. And we are thankfully back to growing. I am very lucky that I was able to build a sales team before this pandemic started and they picked right back up where kind of COVID left us. And we are hopefully going to be up in our revenue from last year, um, which I think is pretty dang cool in a pandemic. So we have learned so, so much in the last, I don't know, I mean, seven and a half years have been crazy for me. I have learned a ton and I hope that you are able to learn something about, you know, changing the way that businesses grow and breaking the rules to grow your company. So here's all, all my platforms. Feel free to hit me up at any of them. Uh, of course, I'm on LinkedIn all the time, so you can always message me there too. And I think we are going to take some questions. Wow, Jackie, thank you for that. I learned a good bit of information. So we definitely appreciate you sharing um, how yes. transparency has really uh, transformed your business. Um, one question that we had that came in is, when showing all your pricing online, Aren't you missing out on customers that can afford your product, but may feel it is too expensive before experiencing what you have to offer in person? Yes, you definitely, I mean, no beating around the bush. You may miss out on those people. However, I have found that those who can afford it, but think it's too expensive, and you have to go through the sales process with them and sell and sell and sell, they often end up feeling that they have been oversold. And it's also harder to kind of like 
get the money from them, if that makes sense. So like those clients are the ones that end up like nitpicking every little thing that we're doing versus the ones that have a little bit more budget. Now, I think there are ways to work with those clients, but yeah, I mean, you you definitely may may miss out, but on the flip side, I think the benefits massively outweigh it. Okay. Um, and work and, and talking to folks and business owners and um, and just sort of mentoring others. Whenever you talk to them about transparency, I'm sure it's sort of a paradigm shift for, for many people. But what do you see um, as, I guess, the biggest roadblock for them or their biggest hesitation to sort of adopt this notion of extreme transparency with pricing, with their clients, with their employees? What, what are some things that hold people back from adop adopting that? Yeah, I mean, it is pretty much the exact opposite of what we've been taught, right? right? So the main thing that I think holds people back is this has been ingrained in me for how long? And then I went to college and I learned the structure of business that does not include anything like this. And then I went into corporate, like I started my career in GE. G is, they're, they're pretty good at some of this stuff, but there's also lots of layers that are not transparent. And I think it's ingrained in us for so long to kind of hold the bad back um, instead of just showing people that it's okay to be a full person as a leader. So I don't, that, that like internal hesitation is probably the thing that I see the most. Got you, got you. Okay, definitely, uh, we thank you for that. Um, any closing? Oh. I have a question. <laughs> it wouldn't let me put yeah. it in the Q and A because I'm a panelist, but um, it's something that I hear about a lot, especially whenever it comes to you mentioned being alone at the top um, and and having that sense of you know being alone. And so when it comes to being transparent with your team, uh, and especially in in this day and age where you had to furlough some of them, um, you know I know that you had to let go, but specifically whenever it came to giving the message that you had to furlough some of them. How quickly after you made the decision did you communicate that? And then what was the process? What did the process look like for communicating that? Because I found that a lot of companies go about the process of delivering this type of information completely wrong and it really kind of backfires on them. Uh, so what was your pro what did your process look like for that? Yeah, I mean, we are lucky to have a small team. So we were able to communicate with people one to one. I think that doing so, I've seen companies like make decisions like this and then get, gather the whole team together of hundreds of people. This happened at a company I worked at previously and say, like, everyone's furloughed. And it's like, uh, you know, that's not, it's not a personal message. And I think it can be very threatening people. So we were able to, I mean, honestly, outline exactly why it needed to happen and tell them this is the amount of cash that we have on hand. These are the backup plans that we have. We have this line of credit. We have this amount in savings. We are going to apply for the PPP and we think we might be able to get this much. So just looking at like on a pure cash basis, this is what we have to do as a business. And these are the things that we're going to do to get you back to full time. And I think that we were able to build trust with the employees, knowing that they were able to, you know, like know that we're not just like furloughing them because, um, and we can't afford to keep them on. Does that make sense? Does that fully answer your question? Absolutely, that, that's great. I, I really like the fact that you took the time to um, outline how you were gonna get them back to you know their full salary, I, I think that's uh, that's really beneficial, and I don't think a lot of companies take the time to do that with their employees. So I, I think that's really really great. Um, Corey, yeah. we do have a couple more yeah. questions in the chat. Looks like yes, you we know, do. I I don't think any of my team members are on the line. I'm totally looking at the participant list, but <laughs> I actually we actually have been able to save so much cash that we're going to be bonusing them back out from furlough, and I'm going to be announcing that them next week. So I'm just so pleased to be able to do that because they have all stuck with us and showed how much they care about the company. And I think it's going to be a really great, great moment for everyone. Um, as Destin stated, it looked like we have some more questions that came through. So one is, as a successful woman in business, have you experienced any gender bias that you've had to overcome? Oh, God, all the time. I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's something that happens, I think, to a lot of people in business, right? And I am lucky in that even though I knew it would happen and I saw it happen, I never felt that it was holding me back. Like I always had this 
mentality that I was just going to get in there and kick ass. And I mean, good or bad, my dad always taught me like that I'm going to have to play with the boys in business, which like, I don't love that as like a message for my daughter, but I think it helped me to understand what I was going to need to do to get to the table. Right. And so I've just been like, when I worked in corporate, every single year they gave, gave me a raise. Every year I told them I wanted more money and I was willing to walk away if they didn't give it to me. And it's just like, you have to go in and fight and ask for what you want. And I think that women are taught that less than men. So yes, there is tons of bias that I think you have to overcome. And oh God, I mean, I could talk about that all day. Um, hey, we have someone else in the chat box that says, thanks for being transparent. Many companies are learning that brick and mortar locations are not only not needed, but counterproductive. Have you considered losing the location cost? If, um, and if not, why? Great, very applicable question. Um, yes, we have, which is so sad because uh, I, God, I mean, when I started building a company, I dreamed of like, you know, having my name up on the building and we got this big office with open windows and I put our company name up and I was like, wow, I did it. And then suddenly COVID was like, no, <laughs> just kind of like smacked us back down. Um, yes, I actually have just started um, negotiations with our landlord to either sublet or whatever that may look like now. I know that a lot of landlords have been flexible during this time. Ours is not really being very flexible, so we will see what we can do. But I don't, I don't think our team wants to go back to working in the office. Frankly, I think most of them really like working from home and we'll find something that fits to meet in the middle, you know, like maybe it's a physical location where we come together once a week or something like that. But I would love to ditch the location cost. Yes. <laughs> Okay. It looks like one of our partic uh, participants says, um, I love the concept of give it all away. I struggle with this for fear my competitors will be able to emulate what we offer. How do you continue to differentiate your value from your competitors when they can price competitively? Mm -hmm. When I was learning about this theory, I specific I remember, I think I was listening to a podcast and they said, when you have that fear, remember that whatever you have published on your website that someone's going to go and grab, you are light years ahead of them, right? You've already gone through the process of figuring out what the service is, testing it, proving success, getting case studies, writing about it on your website, and anyone that's going to come and grab that and try to emulate it, they're starting at square one, which is what? a year, two years ago for you. So by the time they get to the place you're at, you're gonna be you know, ahead two years delivering your next service. So to me, that's not really a concern. And frankly, it happens all the time. I had to actually once fire a client who wanted to, who took our processes and tried to like go and deliver them to other people. Um, and I found out from one of our clients that they were trying to sell to. It was not my favorite situation, but it was just like, you know, like let's part ways and we'll be friendly and I wish you the very best of luck. We're competitors, but in my mind, we don't really compete. Okay. It looks like that brings us to the end of our questions. Um, do you have any uh, closing remarks, remarks or reporting thoughts that you would like to leave with us? Ah, they always ask that and I never have anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't, you know, if, if anyone has questions, hesitations, anything like this, I can tell you that I have had to fight through massive internal resistance through this entire process. Every single thing I talked about today, I didn't want to do. And I had to be convinced and I was, you know, like brought along kicking and screaming by my business coach or people on my team or whatever it may be. I think that the times that we feel the most resistance in building a business are the times that we are closest to that breakthrough. So keep pushing. And like I said, um, hit me up on LinkedIn or email me or anything else. If anyone has questions, I'm happy to help.